Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we are working on a 2005, so an older Mercedes. Uh, it's a CLK and this car is a crank no start. Now it was brought to me by another shop and they've been working on it for weeks, if not months, and it's still a crank no start. So it's up to us to figure out what's wrong with it. So let's diagnose it together. So I asked the other shop to provide us with some history of what they'd done so far. And this is what they wrote. Good morning. This car was brought into our shop with a broken timing chain. We found another used engine from the junkyard, installed it, but it was a crank, no start. We did have a fault code for a camshaft sensor and we did some measurement and we thought the problem was in the engine computer. So we found another used engine computer, cloned it, installed it, but still a crank, no start. Then we decided to open up the engine and we saw that the used engine had a brand new timing chain installed, but the timing was off. So we retimed the engine, but still a crank, no start. Then we thought the problem might be in the camshaft adjusters. So we swapped them out from the other, <laughs> other engine, but you guess what? Still a crank, no start. So a lot of parts changed and a lot of time invested. And this of course all happened over the course of a few weeks. So I don't think this is gonna be something really simple, but hey, you never know. Now let's start out by confirming the customer complaint and see if we really got a crank no start. It would be something, right? If the car fired right up. So let's find out. We're inside the car and we do have got a message for the low coolant. Now I don't think that could cause a crank no start. Or could it? What do you think? Well, anyway, Let's crank it and let's try again. Oh, and it wanted to start one more time. Oh, almost. Well, I guess that's customer complaint confirmed. This car is a crank, no start. Well, that's customer complaint confirmed. We definitely have got a crank no start, although it almost wanted to run. Now the other shop told me they had a fault code for, I believe, a camshaft sensor. So in the next step, we're gonna read the car for fault codes. Now the cranking was also getting a little bit slow and we need to do some testing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hook up a battery charger. Now let's quickly hook up a battery charger because we need to read fault codes, maybe look at live data. We probably need to do some testing. And during this period, the ignition needs to be on and that could drain our battery. Now a low battery could cause all kinds of issues by itself. So when you're diagnosing a car for a longer period of time, it's always a wise thing to hook up a battery charger. I'm very sorry about the humming, but that comes from the engine when the ignition is on. I hooked up a battery charger so we don't have to worry about the battery voltage anymore. I hooked up the wireless dongle. I selected the car, so let's go into engine control module. And let's find out what fault codes we've got stored. So let's read fault codes. And just like the other shop told us, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I'll put up a screenshot for you guys. We've got a P200B left intake camshaft hall sensor, no signal, and the OBD code for that is P0340. Now, just like the other shop told us, we've got a fault code stored for a camshaft sensor. In this case, the intake camshaft sensor. Now, the description is um, intake camshaft sensor, no signal. Now, don't take that description literally. Uh, it could absolutely mean that the sensor is producing no signal, but it could also mean that the signal is not as expected. So it could be of a different shape, the timing could be different, so we still could have a timing issue. Now let's start out by taking a closer look at that signal. Now I quickly hooked up the scope to that sensor to do a quick check. Now we have got a fault code stored for the intake camshaft sensor. So that's gonna be this one, this being the intake, and obviously the other side is gonna be the exhaust. And that sensor is gonna be on the side of the cylinder head. Now I connected the scope to the middle wire of that sensor. I didn't take a look at a wiring diagram yet, but most of the time uh, the signal wire is gonna be the one in the middle. So maybe we get lucky. Now we can definitely see somebody 
has been in here before because this wire has been repaired. Now it looks like somebody has cut it and joined it back together. I don't know why, but let's crank the car over and take a look at that signal. Let's start the scope and let's crank the car. Now, as you could see, that looked like a good signal. Now, for the ones who've watched my previous video, what appears to be a good signal doesn't always mean it actually is a good signal, but at least we know that the sensor is producing a signal. Now, this means we could still have a timing issue, despite of the other shop telling me that they have checked the timing, adjusted the timing, and they're 100% confident that the timing is spot on. To check the timing, we would have to open up the engine and physically check the timing marks. Now the other shop has already done this and they adjusted the timing and they assured me that right now the timing is spot on. So at this point, I am far from confident we have actually got a timing issue. Now, before opening up the engine, I need more confirmation. In the next step, I want to check the timing of the engine using an oscilloscope. This is a lot faster than physically opening up the engine and checking the timing marks. Now, we can do this by taking a look at the crank cam correlation. Now, the best way to perform this test is at the computer itself. That way we can make sure that all the signals are actually making it to the computer. Now, to do this test, we need to know the pinouts of both cam sensors and the crank sensor. So in the next step, Let's take a look at a wiring diagram. So right now I'm leaning towards a timing issue, but the thing holding me back is the other workshop telling me they have set the timing and the timing is now spot on. So let's do some research and let's see if we can find any bulletins regarding timing issues on this 271 engine. So let's go into DDTSB and select the car we are working on. So I've selected the car we are working on. So let's go into bulletins and let's enter timing into the search bar. Now, right away, a bulletin comes up with problems regarding a worn timing chain on this engine. And when we open the bulletin, we can see the 200B code and the PO340, exactly the codes we have got. The bulletin also tells us that in models with the four cylinder type 271 engine, the timing chain is known to fail. Now the bulletin gives us known bad pictures, known good pictures, what to look for, what to replace. And the great thing is that these bulletins are made with help from specialists from all around the world. So people who know what they are talking about. In this case, Jacob from JTC Mercedes and AMG specialists. Looking at this bulletin and seeing the exact same fault codes we have got makes me even more confident we have got a timing issue. But a bulletin is not a silver bullet, it's a guideline. And the bulletin even tells us not to jump to conclusions, but do the proper testing first. So let's stick to our original plan and take a look at a wiring diagram. Now it's not standard, but you can upgrade DDTSB with Autodata. And when you've got the paid upgrade, you can click on Autodata and it will take you to the exact same car you're working on in Autodata. That's very convenient. Now let's select wiring diagrams and let's select engine management. So these are the three sensors we are looking for. This is the crankshaft position sensor and these are both camshaft position sensors. So we need to take our measurements at pin 30, pin 32 and pin 14 on the engine control module. So I hooked up the scope to the right pins or at least according to the wiring diagram and I had to remove the backside of the cover to get access to those pins and yes I'm getting older and I need reading glasses to see those tiny numbers on the connector. So I hooked up three channels, one for the crankshaft sensor and both cam sensors and remember they said they replaced the engine computer and it definitely looks like it because there are markings probably from a junkyard on that computer C180 it says and there is a warranty sticker on it anyways come on focus anyways we're gonna crank the engine and catch the waveform and take a look at the timing so the scope is ready to record let's get into the car and let's crank the engine over for, let's say, eight seconds, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm going to crank the car and you guys take a look at the waveform. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the waveform we've just captured. So let's zoom into it so we can get a more detailed look at it. Now the waveform we've captured doesn't mean anything to us unless we know what it's supposed to look like. So we have to compare it to a known good one. Now I haven't got one myself and I haven't got a similar car in the shop. I took a look at the Pico library and I couldn't find one. And I finally ended up at a website called Rocky. And there was actually someone who had uploaded a known good crank cam waveform for a 271 Mercedes engine. So big shout out to Rocky and let's compare our waveform to a known good. When we take a look at the waveform we've captured in white and compare it to the one we found online in black, we can see that one of our cams is timed 6 teeth before top dead center and the other cam is timed 19 teeth after top dead center. When we take a look at the known good, we can see that 13 teeth before top dead center on one cam and 10 teeth at the top dead center on the other cam. So there's definitely a timing difference between those two waveforms. Now, what have we found so far? So far, we've only got one fault code for a cam sensor and we've got the other shop telling us they've checked the timing, they adjusted the timing, and supposedly the timing is spot on. We also only found one known good waveform. I wish I found more to compare it to, but unfortunately, I only found one. Now, what if that supposedly known good waveform isn't any good after all? Now, on the other hand, we did find a bulletin for a stretch timing chain with the exact same fault code we've got, and the waveform we did find is different than the one we've captured. Now, what do you think? Does this justify us opening up the engine and manually check the timing? Now, at this point, I really think we've got no choice and we need to open it up and check the timing ourselves. I opened up this engine to the point we can physically check the timing marks and I really hope this wasn't all for nothing and it turns out to be something totally unrelated. I would hate that. It's also very hard for me to imagine the other shop got the timing wrong because timing this engine isn't all that difficult. It's just lining up three dots, that's all. Anyway, we're about to find out in a minute. Let's check the timing. Now, like I said before, timing this engine isn't all that difficult. On the crankshaft pulley, we've got OT over here, which is top dead center. And on the other side, we've got UT, which is bottom dead center. And top dead center has got to line up with this point over here. And then we can check the timing marks on the camshaft. So let's rotate the crankshaft to the top dead center. And almost. And that's top dead center. So I perfectly set the crankshaft at top dead center. And when we do the two timing marks, one on this camshaft and one on the other need to line up with this arrow. And there's an arrow over there. And there's also a mark on the crankshaft or sorry, on the camshaft itself right there. You need to line up with that arrow and they both, or all four, almost perfectly do, like you can see. Maybe they're off by a hair, but certainly not enough to cause a no start or set a fault code. So I have to admit the other shop was right and we were wrong. There's nothing wrong with the timing. Now, to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised. I was really convinced we were dealing with a timing issue. Everything makes sense. Uh, the bulletin, the fault code, the history of the car, the weak timing chains. Now, as you could see, by the way, this timing chain is brand new. So um, apparently they replaced it at some point. Now, I need a minute to think about what should be our next step. What do you think should be our next step? Well, give me a minute. Now, let's be honest. What do you think should be our next step? And what could be causing our issue? 
Now I'm gonna be honest as well, and for a moment, I didn't know what our next step should be. So I took some time off camera, trying to get my head around this problem, tried to figure things out. And I was thinking, have we missed something? Did we do something wrong? And to be honest, I like it when things aren't the way we thought they would be because that makes this case a lot more interesting. Now, I did figure it out and it all makes sense now. We didn't do anything wrong. In fact, we did everything right. Now, let me show you what I just found. I removed the spark plug of the number one cylinder and placed a long screwdriver on top of the piston. We're going to try to find the top dead center using nothing more than a long screwdriver. So let's rotate the crankshaft and the screwdriver is going down and still going down. And right now it's coming back up. So that was bottom dead center, the lowest point of the piston. Now the screwdriver comes back up and slowly now it wants to go down again. So this is roughly top dead center. Now let me show you the timing mark on the crankshaft pulley. Now this is top dead center and this is our timing mark. So right now it's off by almost 40 degrees. So it turns out that top dead center isn't really top dead center. Now OT on that crankshaft pulley means oberste the total punkt, and that means upper dead point or top dead center. Now how can top dead center not be top dead center? That doesn't make any sense, right? Now give me a few minutes to remove the crankshaft pulley and let me explain to you what's going on. So I quickly removed the belt and the crankshaft pulley from the engine. There we go. And I quickly placed it on the workbench. So let's see what's going on. Now it's actually 30 minutes later and our shop is located very near to a huge warehouse of a parts supplier. And I quickly went over and got ourselves a brand new crankshaft pulley because to understand what's going on with our engine, we have to compare our crankshaft pulley to a known good one. Now this is our crankshaft pulley and this is a brand new one. I placed them both with the keyway facing straight up. The keyway is always facing top dead center. So when you're timing the engine and place it in top dead center, that keyway is always pointing up. Now, if the keyway is pointing up, the OT mark is of course also facing straight up because those two are aligned at the factory. Now, when we take a look at our crankshaft pulley, when we put it in top dead center, our OT mark is way off. So when we use this OT mark as a reference to time the engine, our timing is gonna be way off. But what is causing our timing to be off on our crankshaft pulley? Now, when we take a closer look at this pulley, we can see it's made up out of two metal parts, so an inner part and an outer ring separated by this rubber material. Now, this is done to cancel out vibrations. Now, what happens is that over time, the rubber separates from the outer metal ring. Now, in some cases, the metal ring totally comes off. Now, this pulley actually isn't that bad because I can't even rotate the outer ring by hand, but it did allow it to slightly rotate over time. And when we use this pulley to time the engine, the timing will be completely off. Well, I guess that's mystery solved. We were right after all, this was a bizarre timing issue. Now, it makes you wonder why does an engine with a brand new timing chain end up at the junkyard? It makes you think that whoever changed that chain didn't get it right either. Now, unfortunately, I'm only allowed to diagnose this vehicle. I'm not allowed to fix it, but maybe I'll give you an update later. It's also time to create a new bulletin because somehow I think I'm not the only one facing this problem. This has happened more often and it's going to happen more often. But anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel and when you hit the little bell, you will get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, diagnose then, fix it again. See you next time, guys.
Good morning. This car was brought, out to, brought, brought into our shop, and I'm gonna hook up a battery charge, 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 char, oh. and I'm gonna hook up a battery charge, 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 charge. So I've hooked up the battery charger, so we don't have to worry about the bat. Uh, a non-good crank can. Crank, crank. I'd rather have more, so I could. could, could uh, <laughs>